Yes, doctor, you can start. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good evening to all of you. Thanks for joining in. And today's topic is about pregnancy and newborn. I am Dr. Divya. I have a specialist experience on pediatric dentistry for like three years and overall experience of 12 years. So the reason I chose this topic, pregnancy and newborn, is that before we connect with the children, we have to connect with the mothers also. We have to annul the fears of the mothers regarding the children treatment in the dental clinic. And they're, they're very, uh, they have to be uh, dealt in a way, the children have to be dealt in a way so that we connect a triangle. We make a triangle between the mother, the child and the doctor. So there is a trust between all three of them. So let's just start with the, with the first slide, Pratyushji. So, um, as a mom, your dental health has a lot to do with your baby's future dental health. And what we do not understand is the first three months of pregnancy, these are very crucial uh, time. This is where the organs are forming inside the baby. So, uh, when you swell up, your changes are also happening inside the oral cavity. And uh, these include swelling of the gums, which is also known as gingivitis. And it has been noticed, noted like almost 70 a uh, percent of pregnant women, they have gum issues or almost 40 percent of them will be having uh, gum as well as bone issues which is called as periodontitis or in Hindi we call it pyria. So uh, this is very important for us to understand that uh, why what we are going through, it should not affect us. We should be taking care of self too. Next slide Pratushji. So what happens actually is that we cannot almost blame the uh, hormone progesterone for this. So we have two uh, hormone progesterone estrogen, but progesterone is the main hormone which is uh, responsible for, for maintaining the pregnancy. So there is a rapid surge of this hormone and this increases the blood flow to the, uh, to the entire body system and also to the baby. So uh, when it increases the blood flow in the entire system, in the oral cavity, and if we have underlying issue like plaque, then they have a complex reaction, which causes increased vascularity and bleeding problem. So which is called as gum issues or gingival health. Next slide. So although pregnancy is a happy time for you, you want to stay happy, but you're also stressed. There are so much complex emotions involved in pregnancy. You have headache, you have backache, you have morning sickness, you are vomiting off and on, you do not you become very sensitive. So there's a lot of uh, physiological changes and there's a change in the eating pattern which is happening. And we tend to crave more for some sticky and spicy, crunchy food which tend to stick on, on, on our teeth surface. So um, this will help in the formation of plaque. And interestingly, plaque has been associated with both the gum diseases as well as the bone diseases. Next slide, sir. So uh, once the, the, the flow of uh, hormones is there, and if there's a plaque present, then understand there will be a, a zone of inflammation. When, a, when there's a zone of inflammation in, in certain areas, they will create products that will transport through your blood system, even to placenta, uterus, and cervix. They will go up to the uh, baby. And in certain cases, as we know that uh, bad gum health is associated with uh, heart diseases. In this case, bad gum health may be associated with preterm babies and um, uh, restricted fetal growth. Next slide, please. So, neglecting cleaning is usually driven to mood altering hormones and uh, they may cause persistent sadness and loss of interest. You do not want to do anything at that time. You want to just stay the way you are. You want to eat everything spicy. You want to eat something which is crunchy and all these things. Basically, they um, took a toll on your gum health. So uh, you may even resort to uh, smoking or drinking, which has a deleterious effect in the first three months, especially because that's when the organs are forming. So you may have to avoid all these uh, things. Next slide, please. So uh, we, uh, what are the changes we are expecting? As I told you, there will be pregnancy induced uh, gingivitis or gum issue. But please do not blame it on hormones um, totally. Then they will be, if these issues are not tackled, then they form a tumor. 
However, there is nothing to be scared of because these tumor are in difference with the hormones that have caused it. And once the pregnancy is over, these will also settle down. In, uh, initially, just not that, there will be a dryness of mouth which is happening. And because of dryness of mouth, more plaque is forming. You start to have a gastric reflux, that is known as morning sickness. Once the acid come in the oral cavity, you know you're creating acid environment in the mouth that will create, uh, that will remove the enamel layer. And once that enamel layer is removed, we are more tend to have cavities and caries. Next slide. So most of the time the barriers are within us. 60% of them believe that it is unsafe to go to dental clinic for any treatment. 50% are unaware that oral health is as important at this time as any other time. Some of them even consider uh, general health to be more important than dental treatment. And uh, sometimes they consider it normal. That it's just pregnancy. Let it stay. When the pregnancy is over, then everything will be back to track. So consider these barriers. As we are available for you and you would like to be taken care of. Next slide. So when you plan for pregnancy, you go and inform your dentist about it. Get the necessary treatment done. Go for restorative treatment. Go for prophylaxis. If there's any extraction like impacted tooth involved, go for that. There will be, um, if we take care uh, of these things, if these issues are the right time, then uh, the, nine, the next nine or six months, which we're going to have, will be safe. So uh, inform about them to your dentist. And believe me, all the trimester, they are equally safe for all restorative treatment. And consider that um, your scheduling will be something like at least you go twice in the first trimester, trimester the once in the second trimester, and third in the uh, once in the third trimester. So this way we will be able to take care of the gum issues and we will be able to provide better health to you. So what are the basic steps? These are brushed twice only with a fluoridated paste. These are simple steps which you can follow at home. Uh, and these include brushing twice with a toothpaste, which is fluoridated. Flossing once, a lot of people don't know about flossing. It's so important, 60% of the bacteria they found broken between the tooth surface. So floss once, go for non-alcohol based mouth uh, rinses because of your uh, morning sickness. Go for xylitol chewing gum because xylitol it tends to um, anal the acidic uh, acidification of mouth. Then uh, avoid over-the-counter antacid. Go for baking soda rinses, which you, which you can prepare at home. And go for a balanced diet. Next slide. So what is balanced diet? Something which has all the nutrition involved in it, like iron, supplements, and uh, protein, and carbohydrates. It's a full plate that you get. And among this is very important. Why? Because the tooth formation is happening in the third to sixth week of pregnancy. So you would like to choose a healthy diet, which is good for you and your baby. So go for vitamins such as vitamin A and D. They are important for enamel formation of baby. Have vitamin C, which is also now very kind of very popular. So because it increases immunity and uh, you would like to have your full cash source somewhere around 1200 to 1500 mg because your baby bones are forming. They they will consume calcium from your body, so you would like to have uh, the replacement for that too. If your water fluoridation is not optimum, you may ask your pediatrician or gynecologist about the fluoride supplements. And avoid sugar and snack. Go for cereals, fruits, veggies, fish, egg, and meat. Next slide. So as uh, you understand now that mothers play a fundamental role for furthering a good practice, and they should have the basic awareness. Uh, they should meet the dentist. If they have any queries, they should ask the pediatrician. They, they can ask the gynecologist about the issues that they're having in the oral cavity, and they will be able to refer them to the right doctor. Next. So communication, you understand, is very imperative. And you understand the fact that babies can, uh, can catch germs from you. So what we call is as vertical and horizontal transmission. Vertical is when you are keeping the baby close and from you, the bacteria or germs from your mouth goes into your child's mouth. Then they will form a, a pocket over there. Horizontal transmission will be something when your uh, siblings are playing together and they're exchanging spoons. So it's very important that you do, do not uh, exchange spoons or cups, always sterile them. And uh, understand that if these germs build up on tooth, they lead to a very common phenomenon, which is called as baby bottle to, to, uh, tooth decay. Let's see what it is that, uh, Pratishji. 
So um, baby bottle tooth decay happens when sweetened liquid or those with natural sugars, they cling to infant teeth for a very long time. Bacteria in the mouth thrive on sugar and they make an acidic environment and that acid attacks on teeth along with germs. So this teeth and curve is very important. See how uh, fast the, uh, the pH of the mouth drops to uh, acidic environment in just two to two, uh, five minutes. And it stays there for a very long time for the decay to take place before it comes back to its normal position. So you may have to consider this, that whenever you are consuming sweet, starchy food, you wash, you rinse so that your saliva helps in building back the pH back to normal. Next slide. So how do we do? What do we feel? Breastfeed is the key. The latchment mechanism is so important in this case. Breast milk, please understand, does not cause tooth decay. There is lactulose, but uh, lactose, uh, but they do not bring the pH down to acidic level. So for the first year of life, from six to 12 uh, months, it's very important uh, that breastfeeding should be given. Next slide. Uh, avoid cow's milk for that uh, matter of fact, because animal feed is for animals, you know, and uh, breast milk is safest and it's full of cholesterol and immunity building agents. So ADA specifies that you should must you must continue breastfeeding for the first year and after that as mutually desired and WHO consider is for two years and um, whenever you think it's best for the baby to uh, wean off you should start doing it but understand the, the the bottom line is that you do not make the child sleep with the bottle or the breastfeed that is not the last drink that they should be having always complement with water or wash them, wash them off next slide. So how is breastfeeding important? It's the first natural orthopedic device. When the child is gone, the jaw, lower jaw is 12 mm behind. So once the latchment of child happened with the breast, they start sucking in, the TMG is growing, there's more of anterior posterior motion, there's opening and closing. So all four moments, they help in tone of the mouth, they help in the, uh, uh, the, 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 the nasal respiration, they increase the breathing capacity, and they, they make the change from the back of the jaw to the front of the jaw. As you can see, there's a sudden change from uh, breastfeeding. Next slide. So basically, if you just go ahead with the bottle feeding, these motions are not possible. Only opening and closing are possible. And what WHO says is that there has been 57% uh, reduction in cavity if the baby is nursed rather than given bottle. And this is how they overall build up the uh, extra, um, the orofacial musculature, they correct the tongue posture. Next slide. So when should you discontinue? As I have mentioned that at least one year, from the start of six months till one year, it's a, uh, it's a good time for you to start weaning them off. Uh, for a bottle feed, it's very important that you must discontinue by 12 months. And based on the scientific evidence, it has been seen that if you continue bottle feeding for more than uh, two years, then there are more chances of malocclusion happening. Next slide. Understand that in the first year of life, if you are breastfeeding, then do not have to clean the mouth. There is a deposit of your milk residues on tongue, which is full of uh, immunoglobins. They are full of nutritive agents. You do not want to stop them. And, uh, but in case of uh, you know, bottle feeding, you may have to consider that you start cleaning them with, uh, by the fourth month. But because you have to understand that um, the, the formula milk, they have constituent of sugar on them and sugar and germs to together build up to form the Next slide. So what you can do is once you uh, see the tooth in the mouth or once they have a skidding problem, you can just use those uh, silicone thimbles and start uh, massaging over the gums. Even that can participate in this activity after cleaning their hands. And uh, use uh, wet gauze, sterile wet gauze to clean up the tooth surface when they start uh, uh, small teeth they appear. And avoid any kind of uh, benzokine uh, or local anesthetic uh, to help them in teething because these are chemicals that you're introducing. So with that, and instead of using uh, sugary uh, uh, juicy uh, jellies, instead of that, you can use uh, breast milk as soothers. You can uh, freeze them for some time and then use that soothers. Next slide. 
So this is the timing uh, which uh, you were asking for. Um, see, this, this is a common query for the mothers to ask whether the child is not having the teeth at the right age and what is the problem. So mostly the child, uh, they should understand that uh, teething will vary from six months to maybe one year. Some have a delayed uh, eruption of teeth, which is normal. They should not be so worried about it. And initially you should know for the fact that the first six months, by the sixth month, they will see the first front two lower teeth followed by the front upper teeth and then the laterals will fall in. And accordingly with the amount of uh, the, the kind of tooth that is coming in your oral cavity, you should also change the diet. So once by six months you have started to wean off your uh, child from the breast milk, you introduce soft mince diet during that period until the last molars erupt, that is by 20 to 29, that is by three years. So then you can have, they can have the proper uh, meals, you know, like rice and uh, chapati, small chap chapati, which is soft. So between six months to 29 months, there is a formation of teeth and your feeding and your diet also changes accordingly from soft to normal. Next. So uh, the common problem is why should I worry about taking care of a baby teeth from their uh, elders or from whoever they are. There's a common problem uh, or notion, baby teeth are temporary, they will fall off in time. So, uh, but you need to understand that they are there for a reason. They are there for chewing, they are there for speaking, the certain word like th, th. All these require the use of incisors, the, the, the importance of teeth is there and uh, um, they hold a place for the adult teeth to fall in. They are like a natural space maintainer. So you want to protect them, but if they're infected, there are more chances of adult teeth falling into their wrong places, crowding happening, jaw infections happening. Why, why would you uh, like to put your child into such infection or any kind of a disease? Believe me, dental decay is infectious, but it is preventable. Next slide. So, as I told you, uh, these are natural space maintainers. You'll do your best to take care of them. Avoid introducing formula, sugar, juice uh, in, the, uh, in the first year of the life. And try to keep them away from sippy cup. Do not re reward them with sippy cup if they are fussy. Um, and at least specify should be stopped by the age of six months, maximum by two years. Because, uh, next slide please. Because we do not want these issues to happen. Both pacifier or, or if a child develop a, a thumb sucking habit, then uh, there, are, there are changes in the oral cavity, in the, in the dentition happening, the front and the lower teeth, they will, uh, they will move ahead, they will um, become spaced and they will be open wide. So you do not want these conditions to be happening. So you have to discontinue the certain habit which are deleterious for the longer run. Next slide. So dental brushing must start when the first teeth erupt in the mouth and you can use small brushes, the small head and curved head with soft nylon. You want to use them in a very small, uh, along with a small part of toothpaste which has a fluoride content somewhere between 1500 ppm and you have to continue that twice daily in the morning and the in, in the night to build up a routine. In this case, silicone thimble may not be very useful. They do not remove the plaque easily. So good brush, small brush with soft bristles are good. Next slide. This is the AD recommendation. And uh, the recommendation says that between first uh, two years of life, just use half a grain size of fluoridated toothpaste. Then from two to four, about rice grain, four to eight years, small pea size, and uh, by the time they are, uh, they are under eight years of growth, they can use a normal adult rope on the tooth, on the toothbrush. Next slide. So what is the motion? This is a common uh, question that is asked, brushing technique. Always remember the braid ball and broom. Braid is, this is how it goes from top to bottom. So in, in case of uh, cleaning the tooth, it goes from back to front. And in case of ball motion, now braid is practiced on the occlusal table. Ball is practiced on the cheek region. And broom is practiced on the lingual surface. So when you're using a ball motion, it goes in a circular manner. If you're using a broom motion, it will be uh, from the lingual side of the tooth. Next slide. 
hands. When you're doing that, please remember to wash your hands. Lift up the lift. If you see the state of affairs with the children, you should know that cavities are sitting. So, uh, lift your child upper lip, pull down the lower lip, look at the gums and teeth, examine each part of the teeth, and uh, check for any brown spot or black spot. This is a time when you should visit a dentist, of course, and get them corrected. Next slide. So, flossing is something which has to be introduced now. It's uh, been long neglected. So what we consider the notion is that since the, the dentition is spaced, you do not require flossing in children. But the thing is there are children who have a non-spaced dentition or when the tooth are in contact. So flossing will basically uh, is effective in removing the biofilm which form and removing any plaque between the tooth surface and enhance the fluoride retention. When you floss and when you brush, the fluoride retention is more. You can use floss in case of children. Next slide. And of course, fluoride varnish is the go-to treatment and is the most effective method of caries reduction. It has been established, established that almost 47% um, it is helpful in, in inhibiting the bacterial attachment. So high caries group are those children which have more than five to six caries in their mouth and they need a full arch varnish treatment for next three months. And moderate caries would be somewhere around two to four caries. Every six months is the protocol for um, varnish uh, treatment, whether they are getting water fluoridation or not. Low risk uh, may be having one or two cavities. That can be done every early or biannually. Next treatment, uh, next slide, sorry. So basically understand that what we have learned is that milk teeth are temporary. And why should the child go through a stressful situation in a dental clinic? Because they are not cooperative according to you, but you have to understand that caries do not understand your cooperation level or child cooperation level. And they will happen, and if they happen, they are going to eat up the entire tooth. So why should child suffer from malnutrition because of the inability to choose certain foods? So uh, you have to understand the importance of dental treatment in this regard. Next slide. Understand the hidden sugars. What, what all the moms say is my baby doesn't eat chocolates or candy. Why is he having cavities? So what the market is telling you is healthy in notion, but what is hidden is what we do not know. Try not to award uh, uh, them for doing good things by giving them chocolate and cookies. If you run out of food, give them toys instead. Give them something to learn instead. Once they get the flavor of these sugar and salty food, it's very hard to limit them. They will start, if you start consuming juices in the first six months, they will have the sugar taste, they will not have natural fruit. So you have to make them understand this fact that you should not introduce sugar and salt in the first year of life and slowly and slowly build up to that. So try to, not, uh, try to give non-cavity cotton custom like snacks such as cheese or popcorns when they're good enough to chew on snacks. Next slide. So uh, we come to uh, the oral care in children with special needs. So basic uh, cleaning schedule operation, uh, cleaning techniques are almost the same, but it is about the handling. Why? Because uh, you are dealing with kids who have locomotor issues, you, who have neuromuscular issues, and you want to take care that they do not have any discomfort in that period. So not all dentists have this training, so you must contact your pediatrician. They have the referrals available to them. They will direct you to the right dentist for that reason. So, um, next slide. So uh, the, the action would be, since you understand that breastfeeding is an issue with these uh, children, so check for the gum issues, check for the teeth. And before the teeth arrive, you should start cleaning them with a wet chiffon sterile chiffon and start cleaning gum pads slowly and slowly and uh, when the teeth arrive move on to the brushing and do it slowly but do it gradually they will learn next so uh, since we have uh, so many issues physical and uh, physiological issues there will be changes in how the teeth comes in oral cavity sometimes they will be missing sometimes they will be 
disfigured, they will be having joy issues, they will be having um, crowding, malfusion, there will be so many problems happening in them. So what you can do is that you do not lose your patience. You start, you do what is required from you that is flushing every day. Besides that, you check for any changes. You have to look after the diet of the, of the child because it cannot be natural if the teeth are not present, how will they choose? So according to you, you have to modify the diet in these cases. Next slide. So create a routine for these children. It's very important that you create a routine for them. It's like particular hours of the day, in the morning, in the night, you stand with them, play a music behind, uh, involve them in a playtime and brushing and um, stick to that routine. If you show something different, they are distracted, they may not accept it. So stick to that routine always. Uh, make them spit the toothpaste, which is very important. Fluoride is, in, is necessary in these children also, but you have to make sure that they spit whatever is collecting in their mouth. They should not swallow. Next slide. So when you're dealing with children with special needs, so you do not want to force them. You do not bring a negative uh, attitude towards brushing. You want to bring in a positive positivity about brushing their teeth. Sometimes they think it's a waste of time. Sometimes they think it's annoying. But you have to bring that into the children's life. Start, uh, tell them about um, simple techniques of brushing. And if you're dealing with them, make them lie down. Uh, take care of their extremities. Support the extremities in these cases. And slowly and slowly bring in the brushing motion, support the jaw with the interstinger, remove the upper lip with the help of your thumb, and then uh, check and do the brushing. So uh, supporting of the child is very important in these cases. And always preventing, prevent that you should not take the, uh, the, the toothbrush to the uh, back side of the jaw because there are more chances of heightened gag reflex. Next slide. So how can you adapt a child to brush? Because since they do not have a very firm grasp and uh, it's not a very sharp grasp that they have. So you have to adapt it according to their needs. You may be needing a tennis ball, bicycle handle, or you can a well-foot strap. Make a customized handle by using uh, uh, impressions. And uh, even now we have electric toothbrush available. So they just put them on and they do the round motion and the forward backward motion. You just have to introduce them slowly. Next slide. Basically, uh, the introduction of those toothbrush is important. So when you just uh, simply introduce them, they will be alerted, they will be alarmed. So do it slowly by putting them on the skin, then putting them on their uh, cheeks, then on the lips, and then slowly introducing into the teeth. Next slide. So remember, always support the head. And now we'll be discussing different positions. And while we're discussing the position, always make sure there's enough light in the room so that you can also see when you're brushing. And uh, if you have any queries, you, will, you should always work with your dentist or assistant. They will guide you how to do it. Next slide. So if you are standing, if, if your kids like to stand and brush like you, then you should stand behind them Hold their hand, slowly brush and show them the technique. They will follow you. If you do with them, they will follow you. But always remember to praise them. It's very essential that you praise them for doing a good job. Next slide. If they're sitting on the floor, remember to um, support the extremity. Put a pillow at the back of their head. Put the pillow at, uh, below their legs. And tilt the head a little behind. Sit in, at the back of them. Hold them with your arm. Keep them between your legs so they are supported and then slowly do the brushing actions. Next. If they're lying on the floor, though I am not very uh, happy with this posture reg uh, regarding the, uh, the child tendency to swallow in, but <coughs> using a very small amount like a smear or a rice cane, you can always take care of, of cleaning them also. So place the child on the floor, kneel behind the child, place a pillow in the lap and then do the action. So this is not a very good action technique or brushing technique with the cerebral palsy patient. For them, you should go back to the sitting schedule. Next. In case of wheelchair, sir, you can take it to the next slide. So these are the four ways you can uh, deal with, uh, with patients who have, or child who have uh, weak extremities. So in this case, um, 
when if you're standing behind a wheelchair you can just support the chin and raise the lip and then do the brushing put some cover in front of your chest so that if by chance you're spitting or drooling it will collect on the cloth and in case if you're sitting and doing it then first uh, fix the chair and then tilt it in lying down support the neck and in case of other uh, you can also use a bean bag it is also very helpful next it's very important that you have a child until visit by the age of one year. By that time, you'll be able to tell you any changes which is not good for your child's jaw growth or teeth. So, when you're coming to a child or when you're when you're coming with your uh, with your child to a dental clinic, make sure that you do not use the word uh, because they create an alarming sound like pain, scared, hurt, short. Do not use it that they will not use the drill. Do not say that they will not use the needle. Do not say that there will be no pain. But because anyway, the words will be picked up in their brain and they will recycle it every time. So tell them something good. You're going to visit a dentist. They're going to be kind. They're going to check your teeth. They're going to count the number of teeth and see if you're keeping them white or not. Give them a positive response. Stop. Read them stories. Show them videos. Good videos. Next slide. And uh, you must understand it will be difficult for them to adjust to the new environment. They will be hesitant, but you can slowly have patience with them and uh, try to build up a rapport with the dentist. Okay, so that before you do that, always contact your dentist, tell them what the expectations is, tell them what they are bringing in. So they are prepared, the dentist is prepared to, to handle the uh, the, the situation. Also tell them about any sensitivity which the child is exposed to. Some people do not like their lips to be touched or anything to be touched near their uh, oral region. So they're very sensitive about it. So you have to tell them beforehand. They do not like the taste of dental material. So you have to tell them about it. So they're prepared for it. Next. So uh, as I told you, you have to visit. You must visit your dental by the first uh, birthday. So that um, a protocol is set. It's a long, lifelong continuation of good oral services that we can provide. It can build up a comfortable trust between you and the child. And of course, when we are dealing with, with, with a special need patient, we are also dealing with the parents. So we have to be taking you also in, in trust, you know. You have to build up that trust with you first before we, we set um, our, our treatment pro protocol for the children. Next slide. And uh, when you visit us, we will tell you certain things like how to handle injuries in case of child. Be prepared before you know the injuries are going to happen because they are inevitable. The child runs, walk, they, do want, they want to do so many activities. You cannot stop them from happening, but you can take care of things and be prepared for it. So, also, uh, your child is, exp uh, you, you should know that if a child is experiencing pain, what you can do. If there's a crowding where you have to approach, these things has to be dealt in the, in, in the first year, by the first year of life, when you visit a dentist, they will tell you beforehand what is coming in future. Next. So the eating habit, make a diary before you visit a dentist, make a diary of what kind of food you're introducing in the diet and supplements that you're giving. Uh, avoid the use of sugar and starch uh, from your side. And um, even medicines like, a patient uh, of cerebral palsy or a um, child who's on Down syndrome, they are on antibiotics, they are on, uh, on medication that will decrease the saliva, which will increase the chances of or risk of cavities. And uh, you have to know that even one spoon of bitter medicine is masked with at least four to five times more of sugar just so that they can have it. So do not make it as a last uh, supplement before going to sleep, always rinse and uh, make sure that they are able to respond to the sensitivity. They are able to tell you about whether, whether they like the taste of certain food or not, and what kind of food they are able to eat. Next. So again, any kind of uh, gum problems will be seen in the first, uh, after the first year, you should get them. Next slide, sir. Also share with your dentist, with your child, intellectual and functional abilities, including information on the best way to communicate so that we dentists know how to communicate with your child. So we know how and what thing can trigger an alarm, what can trigger a self-injurious behavior. 
So we stick to a, a routine. We make a, a planner. We, we, uh, we create a pattern for their oral hygiene and their healthy diet. Next slide. And help your child visual, uh, visualize what, uh, what the visit of dentist would be like in an enthusiastic way. And praise and reinforce whatever positive behavior they show. But try to ignore the negativity if they try to run away from the chair and do not scold them. They are just new to the new environment. They, they, um, they want to get used to it also, but for them, it's, it's going to be a long time. So minimize the number of distractions. Keep the same doctor always. Do not change doctors. Establish a routine and brush the child teeth at least twice. Um, brushes, uh, as I told you that, understand the sensitivity like cerebral palsy. There's more chance of gagging and swelling. There's a breathing challenge. So you have to tell all about it to the dentist beforehand. If your child has trouble spitting, then choose, uh, choose a small amount and then you just wipe it out with, with wet cotton or wet chiffon. Use soft bristles. Hold the child properly whenever you're visiting uh, a dentist. Always support the extremity. Make them rinse with water many times. And always when you get the medicine, wipe them off with pressure.